Welcome back to the Tumi Hobbies channel. My name is Kyle. I'm your host. Uh, today we're going to be going over the range loss that we experienced with our Mustang Mach-E. Now, this is temporary just because it is in the winter, but it is something that um, you should be aware of if you're going to be buying a electric vehicle. So the rest of the world uses uh, Celsius instead of um, Fahrenheit. So today I'm going to be using Celsius. It's a little bit easier to understand for you know the broader audience. Um, for reference, 32 degrees is 0 degrees Celsius. Uh, which is also, uh, I believe, the freezing point. Um, so keep that in mind when we're going over some of these numbers. To start off with, uh, we have a Mustang Mach-E Select. It is the rear-wheel drive version. We have, we have, and during a normal month, we have 230 miles of range. Um, and during this winter month, uh, we experienced 166 was the lowest that I saw. Um, as far as the estimate and the range, that equates to about a 28% loss in uh, battery capacity or range. Not, not necessarily battery capacity, but range. So the capacity is being used by other things, um, which is why it's a lot lower during the winter. So during normal operating temperatures, you know, 75 degrees to pretty much up to 90 degrees, uh, your battery capacity is going to be the normal capacity. So in our case, it's 230 miles. Um, when you're driving an EV, you, you, if you don't want to damage the battery, you don't want to charge it past 80% or under 20%. So that leaves 60% of the range for you to actually use on a daily basis. You don't want to, you don't want to charge it. You don't want to overcharge it or discharge it too often because it, it will affect the uh, life of the battery. So summer months, our usable range was about 138 miles. That's because you know it's the eighty, the eighty percent to the twenty, and the difference. So the eighty percent was one hundred and eighty-four miles, and the twenty percent. Once the twenty percent light comes on, it's about forty-six miles. So the usable range was one hundred and thirty-eight. Now in the winter, our, our the max was one hundred and sixty-six. The eighty percent was a hundred and thirty-three, and the twenty percent was thirty-three, using leaving a hundred miles of usable range uh, compared to one hundred and thirty-eight in the summer. And this is, you know, it's clearly equates to 28% um, loss in range during the winter months. So what are the, the contributing factors that make the battery, uh, you know, the range lower? So much of the energy that is being used is basically keeping your battery at a temperature that is safe for the, for the long range of the battery. Now, keeping that in mind, um, most, well, I think all actually um, EV, Manufacturers recommend that you leave your vehicle plugged in during the winter months so that the electricity from you know from your home can help to condition the battery and it won't use as much of the battery while it's just sitting and not charging. Um, secondly, is the cabin heater. So if you turn the heater on in the cabin and you're not using the uh, the heated seats, the rate of discharge can be from zero to three kilowatts an hour. Um, and in my experience, I've seen major range loss um, when I have the heater on in the winter. For example, I work 25 miles away. If I just have um, the heater on, I use about 20-ish, 18 to 20 percent of the battery just going one way. And when I don't, uh, it's about 12 percent of the battery going one way. So. That is, you know, although, albeit, although it might be small, you know, 12% of your battery loss over going and coming could affect you in the long, in the long term. Or if you have a battery capacity um, that's less, or if your range is further, it's going to affect you in, in one way or another. So it's just something to keep in mind um, when you're using the heater inside of your, inside of your vehicle. And lastly, I would just recommend, you know, use the heated seats, heated steering wheel, heated whatever else that you have that's electric and not the physical e-heat that uh, uses the coolant from the vehicle. That is just going to save you long term. You're still going to keep warm. Everything will be fine. Um, and you know, if, if the, the window fogs up, let's say, because it gets too cold, you can turn it on quick and turn it right back off. And it, it's, it's still comfortable in the vehicle. It's not uncomfortable to just have the, the heat seater on. Um, so when we think about you know, electric vehicle versus internal combustion uh, engines. We that is just something that I never thought to think of that it's going to take a lot more energy for the heater. As a, you know, clearly I didn't think about it because in a internal combustion engine, 
the engine's already the engine is what creates the heat the coolant runs through the engine then runs through your heater core which gives you the heat in the cabin so there's no additional you know as long as the vehicle is running so there's no there's really no additional uh, energy that needs to be used it's just being cycled if that makes any sense um, the range difference um, losing 28 percent of your battery at at freezing temperatures it might not seem like a lot might not seem like a big deal but when you you know you're losing efficiency and that is the reason that um, we purchased the vehicle for efficiency so with an internal combustion engine uh, it's basically it's going to be the same you know from day one to day a thousand granted that you do all the maintenance uh, there's not necessarily going to be these ups and downs in the range if that makes any sense if you put 16 gallons in you're going to get you know on average the same amount of miles plus or minus 10 you know but with an EV 28 percent loss is quite a big loss when you can only use 60 percent of the battery so that brings us back to the same question that we always ask at the end of every video that we do with the electric vehicle is it still worth buying should you buy one um, you're really just gonna have to do the math on this like I said if you're you know if you're buying in a long-range version of a vehicle if you have 300 plus miles something like this is not really going to affect you especially if you're only going 20 miles to work 30 miles to work now if you commute 100 miles to work like some people do um, it's a very small percentage of the population but you know I want to make sure everyone really understands um, the because when you spend money on on an electric vehicle it's not like you're just buying a car you know it's it's it's, there's a premium on these things and they cost more than your average internal combustion engine so keeping that in mind um, people need to know exactly what they're getting themselves into so that's just where I'm coming from with this um, and so I for me it's still the best vehicle I've ever driven it's you know it's still worth buying it's still worth everything for me it might be a different situation for someone who like I said has a longer range my, my wife goes about 50 miles to work one way and she can go to and from work within you know a, a single charge so we don't have any anxiety when it comes to that it's just when we when we want to do a longer range trip if you're if your state's average temperature is you know anywhere in the you know this range here you're probably going to want to think about getting a long range version just so you're not going to have an issue with it and with the long range version it comes a lot less you know anxiety a lot less hassle a lot it comes with a steeper price tag but that's what you're paying for you're paying for that that peace of mind so um just all those blue those blue and those light blue areas just just get the long range version you don't have to worry about it i mean i'm clearly i'm here in california we're in the orange our average temperature is between or uh, i'm sorry the winter average temperatures are between 45 and 50 degrees so we really don't have too many issues with that it's just those cold fronts that come in that drop the temperature down to you know the low 30s to, to upper high uh, 20s those times is when the when the range is really affected by the vehicle all right that's the end of the video guys thank you for watching um please like and subscribe below for more content that will be coming soon once again my name is kyle with the too many hobbies channel and i'll see you next time Now, a hundred and a hundred and thirty-eight. So, what are the contributing factors? Why is it so much lower in the summer than it is in the winter? Um, I said that backwards.